If you've ever struggled with shooting against the sun and having a difficulty having blown out highlights and a good looking subject, this video is for you. We'll be using Layer Notes in DaVinci Resolve to battle this issue, so let's jump in and have a look at it. All right, we're inside DaVinci Resolve and the first thing to do is head in and put a color space transform on our clip here. I'm converting from Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3 to Rec. 9 and Gamma 2.4. Now what I want to do is just add one of my LUTs. I'm just going to use this faded forest one to make it look good. Now, the immediate issue is if we turn everything off, we can see we actually have quite a lot of information and detail in the background. But as soon as we convert it and apply our LUT with some contrast, everything is sitting pretty high up. So what we can do is we can head into exposure and we can either use the HDR wheels or the primaries. I'm going to use the HDR wheels in this case. I'm not mapping them, I'm simply just using them as they are, and I'm going to lower my global to around 0.7. In this case, I think it looks pretty good, but we still don't have much detail left in our background. Now, what we could do is we could try and limit this further, so we could bring down the light and the highlight, and try and see if we can get back some of that nice color and texture and information back in our background. But as we do that, the skin tones kind of start looking weird, and then it becomes a compromise on what we want to look nice in our image. But we can solve that with a very simple solution. So let's reset these two, and right click on our exposure node here, and say add node, and add layer node. That will create another node below, which is actually our top layer. So if you noticed everything went back to normal, that's because this is our top layer. So this will be our sky in this case. And when this layer is turned on, everything below it will not exist. So as I turn it off, it's off and we can see our adjustments that we did below. But as I turn it on again, we won't see any of our adjustments. So what I wanna do here is with my sky layer selected, I want to head into my qualifier. I'm gonna turn off hue and saturation because I'm just interested in the luminance. I'm gonna make a nice qualifier here to select my sky. And if I click Shift H, I can see what I have selected. Now, first of all, I wanna turn the softness of the highlights down and pull them all the way up. And I wanna soften out my shadows a little bit and then I'll pull them a little bit closer to make sure that the selection is not selecting my subject. And now I'm starting to lose a little bit of the right side, so I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit. Now we can see we have a little bit of the highlights selected here, but mostly just the sky in the background, and our waveform shows the same thing. Clicking Shift H again, now we will see that our sky is the only thing that actually is brighter now. And that's because it comes straight from the input here, so nothing has happened before that. What we can do from here is now we can head back into our HDR wheels, and we could now pull down our light, and pull down our highlights until we get a satisfying result. And with this, we've made a very easy and quick selection and brought down the sky and our subject. Now we can do a few more things to make this look even better. First thing is head back into our qualifier and add a little bit of denoise and add a little bit of blur just for everything to blend together even more. And what I also want to do is I don't want the leaf and the glass to be affected as much. So I can just make a mask in this case, I'll just make a squared mask. I'll drag that out over my sky, like so, and pull it down to the point where it's around here. Soften it out, and with that selection, we should see that the glass is now not as affected as it was before. And it does look like we've selected a little bit too much up here. So what I want to do is also head back in and try to select a little bit less in the softening here so that our subject is completely isolated from the rest. And with a few quick adjustments here, we've saved our sky and maybe even bring it back even more. Shadows as well. And with this result, we've pretty much just saved our sky and made the subject stand out. So both with out really losing out on much. So this is a super powerful technique to separate two parts of an image and really work with the highlights versus the rest of the image and isolating them pretty nicely. Now, if the camera were to move and we need to do something here, what we could do is we could head into our tracking window, frame, keyframe, and then we could just move through the scene, see if we need to adjust the alignment somewhere, maybe up a little bit here and move it all the way to the back. And now what we'll see is that our mask will just move with our subject here and make a very nice scene where you would never notice that the background had actually been different from the foreground. That was what I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought and hit the like button and subscribe if you want more. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.